I've got my Q-tips. I've got my tweezers. I have a catch container. And I've got my orchid tops outside. Ah, oh, <laughs> these orchids have not seen the light of day since November 2022. Excite, excite. But what I had to do was put a tray on top so that they don't get blasted because I've got sunshine. I've got sunshine and I'm short sleeved again. And we've got updates coming, especially updates for orchids that were gifted to me. So stick around if you've gifted me an orchid. There are some of them in here that I would like to show you how they've coped throughout these past horrible, cold, dark months. So excited to get the orchid tops out. I forgot to show you another little accessory. We need that. Stick around. We're going to need this. Starting out with my one and only Angraecum leonis. She's the one I've got left, thankfully. I still have her. Not doing too badly, has coped pretty well during the cold months. But what I want to do, and that's why I have my tools with me, is see if I can't remove what I believe is salt buildup, or it could be Feathered Friends fertilizer that has an unpleasant look about it and could still be a little bit too hot for this orchid and her roots. So that's why I have my tools. There's different little maintenance tasks we're going to be doing today while I update you on the orchids in the orchid top. And I have to kind of move fast unless we move position because in order for me to put up my little presentation podium, uh, yeah, I have exposed the orchids underneath to a little bit of direct sun. And depending on how things go, that might be a little bit too much for them. So I'm not going to rush this, but if we have to move location and put my other tray back on as a cover to protect the orchids below, then that's what we're going to have to do. So there's a dead root. I can stay. Orchid tops are great because there's plenty of airflow. What I'm trying to do is that any new roots that grow, like this one right here, which has stopped growing, unfortunately, that they don't hit what is immediately, in my eyes, what it looks like to be salt buildup. So my feathered friends have come and been visiting all winter. <laughs> they will continue to throughout the summer. As you can see, they leave their little remnants here which is fine, which is the only fertilizer my orchids have gotten. The ones that I didn't take out, the ones that couldn't be blessed with natural sunshine. So it's just a question of, not that I'm starting to fertilize right now, there's still plenty of remnants in the pot that has diluted. Leonis, at least I've cleared the base, something I've been very, very meticulous about because I think my other one died because of stem rot. That was so sad. It was growing so, so well. And then about this time last year in 2022, I think I flushed them all through straight away after the first time being outside. And I think I got a little bit ahead of myself. So no flushing on the Leonis. We're going to move on to the next orchid. But thankfully, I still have a Leonis. Here's my Setorcus Pretamisa. I bought in 2021 from Afri Orchids, a magnificent order. Very, very happy with the orchids that came in that order. They came from Africa, so I'm a little bit biased when it comes to these orchids. She has grown pretty well in my opinion, and this is where I want to have a Q-tip just to get some dust off of that leaf. But this time I am squeezing the Q-tip of the excess water because, oh, again, I don't want to risk stem rot, and that's how I lost a Neophenicia falcata, because I was doing exactly the same thing with her, but I didn't squeeze out the excess water. <laughs> anyway, my Pretermisa, I think that's the only thing I wanted to do with this one, grew a new root throughout the winter. It's gone into the lava rock. This is a medium-sized orchid top. Sorry about the spider webs. Like I said, they haven't been outside moved or anything since November and normally I don't mind my spiders but that little web looked like it was broken so the family must have moved out which is perfect 
But you see, it started also to grow three more roots and they stopped. Now, this is a new orchid for me, new in a sense that I'm still learning about her and I'm seeing black root tips and I'm thinking they're not dead root tips. I'm assuming that they are just dormant that way. The spotting on the velamen is normal. It appears to be a characteristic of the way the roots grow. You can see the healthy one here. There we go. Also has spotting, but it's in the media. But the leaf span has increased tremendously compared to when I got her. Look at that. Yeah, that's uh, just about a year and a half's worth of growth. Don't know when we'll see blooms on this one, but she's alive. Muy importante. The order that I'm pulling the orchids out is <laughs> not based on anything. I wanted to go from large to small, but I'm actually now going based on who can take the direct sun better than others. And I think my Rangaris musicola cannot take direct sun. This is fertilizer damage right here. So I've been taught very quickly. She doesn't like that much. She's an extremely slow grower. She also came from the Afri Orchids Aura and she is in a very small orchid top but you can see that her roots are greening up when the media is wet and I'm extremely cautious with this one. And there you can see a root tried to grow, stop, start, stop, start, and it stopped again. I'm hoping it will continue to grow. Nothing really much to report on this except fertilizer burn. And since then, very, very cautious with the fertilizing throughout the past months. And we still have a nice leaf tip here, a new leaf growing there. And this one hasn't burnt either. So this was an initial mistake when she first arrived in my collection. Doing great, alive, happy. This is my Vandoglossum Alexandra 2.0. Thank you, Michael McCarthy and Larry Jones. I appreciate the fact that you made it possible for me to get a replacement of the one that I lost in 2022 due to stem rot. Silly misting, I didn't realize how sensitive this orchid would be, but I want to point out how long it has taken for a spike to grow. And true to its form, it's what its predecessor did as well, the spikes kind of grow down, even though the direction of light was coming from this direction, I was hoping it would grow towards the light. No, it must have seen more light in the opposite direction and the spike went down. <laughs> through the orchid top. I didn't touch it because I thought if you're going to bloom, great. If you're not going to bloom, if the spike is going to fail because it's going to come up against something, then okay, we've lost the blooms. But it did its own little thing. You can see I never messed with the basket, with the roots in the basket. I was just happy to have this orchid back. So all I did was put the basket with the roots and the bark, etc., into an orchid top and just filled around with large lava rock, protecting the roots as best as possible from any kind of abrasion while I was potting this orchid up. I'll link the video in the description if you're interested to see how I layered this orchid. It was quite the puzzle piece, 3D puzzling. <laughs> Sorry about the hoopla in the background, but you can see we have buds. Now that I've moved her outside and done what I've done, I'm not entirely sure we're gonna get blooms. But still, it was important for me to update those that gifted me the orchids that are now in Orchid Top. And I wanted to say thank you once again and show their progress and that your trust in me so far to not mess it up again was justified. So there's that. She's going to go back inside straight away. Even though she likes sunlight, she gets freckling on her leaves, which you can see are completely absent. I have no freckling at all, but that's okay. She doesn't need direct sun. She would prefer bright shade. A little bit of freckling is awesome. Too much sun, not so good. Anyway, putting Alexandra back where she belongs. I'll be right back. I know, not an orchid top, but <laughs> this is my cheapo orchid top. <laughs> my soap dish that I've got my Podangas dactylotheras in to replicate orchid top, which is as clear as day, except it cost me a fraction of what orchid tops cost. Anywho, this is my dactylotheras 3.0. Before my channel, I had one. I lost it. I bought another one. While I had my channel, I lost my 2.0. Here is my 3.0. Thank you so much to Akern Orchids and to Tokyo World Mark, who made it possible for me to get a 3.0 
back in 2021. And she's doing great. I've been extremely cautious. I lost the other one due to misting. And I was thinking of chopping off the roots here that have died throughout the winter. Just gonna leave her, it's no biggie. They don't need to go. You can see that I've been working with microfiber and just keeping the microfiber wet. I would take the microfiber out, dunk it into some water, not much fertilizer, if any. <laughs> but still you can see that from the cold and then the cold microfiber that was on, if the water hadn't evaporated yet, you can see that I've lost what was a very nice little root. Still got a bit of green back here. But yeah, I've still got this root in the front, which the growing tip is activating again. And the growing tip in the back here is also activating. So these are important. And I've got one leaning up against here, which is a shame. It should go down. Yeah, that's activating as well. I wish it would have gone down, but here we are. At least Bodangus is also still alive. Here's my Angraecum Didieri 2.0, my OG. I lost that during the winter of 22, 23, seeing as we're now hopefully moving into some more acceptable temperatures. I got stem rot on it. And honestly, that was not from misting because no way was I misting around the stem during the winter. I was filling up the trays of the orchid tops. What happened there? It just got too cold, not enough light, and well, OG went with other orchids that already paved their way. Anyway, 2.0 is still here with me, still in its ICU setup from when I got it from Matt by Nature in Germany. Thank you so much. You can see that a leaf has, let me show you, a leaf has declined there. It's dried up. I've tried to yank it, tried to get it off, but it won't come willingly, so I've left it can see that some roots are not happy at all. I still got a little stump there. And this one right there going into the hob material. Gosh, oh, that's in focus. And I've got a new root tip growing right there. So I'm in no rush to put this into lava rock just yet. It's going to stay the way it is. But thankfully, I also still have my Didieri 2.0. And thank you to Matt by Nature, who must have had some crystal ball, even though my Didieri at the time was growing really well. <laughs> I never got it to bloom, but Matt by Nature must have had a crystal ball because he sent me a second one. And I thought, okay, two's a charm. Uh, <clears throat> we're back to one. So I appreciate it, Matt. Thank you so much. The next orchid on the docket, <laughs> on the podium, is my Renanthra Caloptera, which I got from Anonymous. Also in 2022, Anonymous was so kind to also send me Minimark, which is currently in bloom. Oh, amazing. Anyway, so here she is. Very slow grower. I mean, Renanthras I find to be slow anyway, whether that's just because of my climate or in general. I don't know if you grow Renanthras and find them fast growers. Let me know in the comments. But at this point in time, Caloptera is also still alive. And I'm always squeezing out the Q-tip now before I take the dust off. So you can see there is a root going down right here. Unfortunately, it stopped growing. Hopefully that's just a rest thing. I was waiting for it to get longer because I really want to tuck it into the orchid top tray. But for now, that root is not going anywhere. There are viable roots in the pot, which is awesome. Very pleased about that. That makes the care for this orchid so much easier because all I do is fill up the tray. I just evicted a spider, oh well. I didn't see that little guy was going to be of any use with a tiny spider web like that. Okay, well, Hakuna Matata, he'll be back if he wants to. So, we've come through the winter pretty well, and I am not going to count my chickens until they are actually hatched, but this is great. I love seeing this. Sorry, as I turn it around, the tag is rather obnoxious and in the way, but developing nicely. The direction of light always came from this side, so I don't want to be too ambitious about how I position her now. Still got the Caloptera Anonymous. Thank you so, so much. It'll take a couple of years before we see her blooms. Nevertheless, we're on our way. A little bit more needs to be done with my Renanthera Monachica. I already did my little Q-tip treatment for her a couple of weeks ago. But see how dusty things get when the terrace door is constantly open at a time where 
airflow is not so cold, so we might as well just give her a little bit of a touch up. Anyway, here is what we're going to use the tweezers for, because I'm hoping that you can see the white sediment on that lava rock. During the winter, I picked out all the lava rock around the base, which during the summer is not that big a deal because of my low humidity. But during the winter, if I haven't mentioned it before, this is my Renanthera monachica 2.0 because I lost my first one to stem rot. There was no way I was gonna have even lava rock, which is very airy, in and around that stem. And if she chooses to grow roots at some point, I'm not going to try and flush out any salt residue on the surface here which is an option. I'm not gonna use that option. I'm just gonna take the lava rock off the surface, making sure that I maintain what I see as far as roots is concerned, covered up because that's what they're used to. But anything else that has a little bit of a white residue on the top, that can go. It's superficial. It doesn't necessarily have to be there anymore, causing any kind of risk hazard to any root tips that will grow. I know that my summer is going to be quite busy, so I may actually completely forget about the salt buildup and then boom, a root grows and then we have issues because you can see, maybe you can't, but let me get you down. Maybe now you can see that right here, you see that? That's normal with orchid tops. They get this salt buildup around their stems. I work with that. Right now I could take a toothbrush, clean it up and everything, but I know that the root inside is viable. It's okay. Just make sure that if I've uncovered something on the top, I need to make sure that it stays covered up. That's what roots are accustomed to. I just saw I exposed a root I didn't want to, so there we go. But you can see that there's another root that actually went out and in. This is a branch, so I lost that. So I'm not too fussed about the fact that I've got salt buildup on roots, as long as they're not squishy. This one is rock hard. Renanthera roots are in general rock hard. And here's another one. And I was always thinking I've lost this root, but it's so rock hard. It's like cement. So I'm thinking this root is okay. I don't like anything, whoops, that was attached to a root. So we'll find a bit of ceramis that doesn't need to be in the back and we'll cover a root that we exposed with some ceramis just to maintain the status quo, but to get the salt off the surface. For that reason, tweezers. Tweezers, you see, we don't want any of this going on. Friendly feathered fertilizer, don't know, don't care, it's gone. Better safe than sorry, so we'll keep that there. Can I get rid of this? Fern, maybe, let me get my snips. Enter another tool, handy dandy. And let's get those, see if we can't sever the growing point of the fern from the roots. They are obnoxious. I don't mind them around some orchids, but that stem rot experience, uh-uh, not happening but I think we're good to go with everything that I've taken off and we're good to go with putting her back inside. Oh, and a little add on, hang on a second before I take her inside. Look at her leaves, dark green. And that is not what happens once she is exposed to bright shade. My renantheras go red, anthocyanin, a deep burgundy red, but that's how little light she has had. I'm hoping she will still bloom for us. Normally she does, no matter what. Very appreciated. <laughs> There's an orchid in there. <laughs> Just talking about how obnoxious ferns can get. Well, here is my Zobeni Coffee Humbertiana, and here is my maidenhair fern. I love maidenhair ferns. This is what grew throughout the winter. Can you believe it? We are facing her exactly the way she got her light source. So it is so beautifully presented. Now, I am not removing this maidenhair fern just yet because this orchid likes a lot of humidity. I wanna see what it can do for this orchid come the summer months when it's warmer. I use ferns to my advantage with the fact that I have very, very low humidity and they help 
create a microclimate around the pot. And hey, I love maidenhair fern. I was so terrible. I never managed to grow maidenhair ferns as a house plant, but they seem to love what I'm doing <laughs> with my orchids. And now I've got lots of bits of maidenhair fern everywhere. Anyway, back to the orchid. <laughs> She, uh, the fact she's growing a leaf, I am super, super happy. Promise you, I'm happy because she lost a leaf over the winter. It just suddenly turned on me. And she also lost the one root tip that was growing, yep, only one, during the summer of 2022. She lost that as well. So the fact that she is growing a leaf, I am guesstimating that I have a viable root or two in this pot because even though these roots are hard, you can see how desiccated they are. They are goners. I'm not cutting them off right now. The main order of what we need to do here today is get all this off. Look at all that salt buildup. And no, that's not me from fertilizing. That is my feathered furry friends fertilizing again. That's from them. I want it off. Not saying that that's why the root did not make it. Climatic conditions, environmental conditions, all that could be the reason. I don't know. This orchid is a super slow grower in my climate. But again, I've had her for how many years now? 2018, she was one of the first ones to come into my collection. And I got her from Italy, but still, I'm, I haven't quite figured this one out. I know she likes high humidity. I know she likes warm temperatures, but why her roots fail on me, I haven't figured it out. But we're going to take all the salt buildup off. I'm just glad that I don't see any stem rot. That was my biggest fear when I saw the leaf go because I have not lost a leaf on this orchid in the longest time. And then suddenly during the winter, you know, that's always so scary when you see leaves go yellow and then brown off and quickly. Ooh, my alarm bells, you know, ding, ling, ling, ling. They ring, a ring, a ring. So I thought I was about to lose her as well, but it looks like she's okay. And we're just going to get rid of the salt. That's the main aim of maintenance for this one. This root is not viable anymore either. It's even squishy when I poke it. Oh, you can't see. <laughs> Sorry. Maidenhair fern intervention. See this root? So this one is squishy even as I poke it with the tweezers, but something must be working in the pot. Oh, well, we'll just make sure that we keep that up so that she doesn't go by the wayside. Let me cut that little piece off just to confirm. It looks green to me. What do you think? Just time to dump a little leaf just to keep me on your, my toes here. Huh. Let's see about the back here. Should I take that off? Let's have a look, see. Not a rhetorical question, but I know you can't answer me until the video is aired, which is, which would be great. I wonder what you think about this. Let me know what you think about what I'm doing here, what you're seeing. Your opinion is valuable and much appreciated. See that? It looks to be okay. The fact that all the roots are dead. This one is the desiccated one. Here's the one that goes squishy at the end. I'm not cutting it because sometimes they can fool you. They might be bad at the end, but all this is working. So yeah, I'm just going to reestablish the status quo with some lava rock that it doesn't have any salt on it. Just around the root here, which I exposed a little bit too much, but we have salt free lava rock that we can work with, not you. Not you either. I have to be careful because some lava rock just fades because of the time it has spent in the pot exposed to light. So it's not all salt buildup, but if in doubt, just take it out. 
Hey, hey, that rhymes. <laughs> I'm doing great today with my alliterations, feathered friend fertilizer, and if in doubt, take it out. Yeah. And also remove a little bit of the dead stuff at the base here. You can see that moss doesn't like it salty either. And moss doesn't like the lack of light either. And now, last but not least, the project that I want to finish this video off with, with the updates and all. This is where my handy dandy little recycling basket comes into effect because Orangus fastuosa, great orchid for mounting, not so good if you don't have high humidity, points me, hola, that would be me. Anyway, <clears throat> you can see what is happening with the stem. I did pot her up into the small orchid top with ceramus only, and I didn't mind if she was going to grow out, you know, the way she likes towards the light. But what I cannot have happen is that the new roots are not going to go into the media. They will frazzle out and die before they even reach anywhere down here. So what needs to be done here, this orchid has to be taken out of her pot and corrected its position to upright once again and yeah, if you're still around, thank you so much. How about liking the video? Because now we're actually going to do something a little bit more practical as opposed to yada, 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 yada. I'm happy she's alive. And while I resituate my little staging area, subscribe while you're at it, share it around, all that fun stuff that helps a video get into the algorithm. That would be so appreciated. Thank you. Meanwhile, from this angle, quick update. Let's hope that this is the status quo when we're done with this. New leaf just grew recently and a second leaf is coming in the center. Very happy. Whether she's going to bloom, I don't think so. It's already, in my opinion, far too late. But if you've got an orchid like this with hardly any roots, then, well, she's got no strength to bloom. And we're going to help her out so that in 2024, we get to see her blooms. Now I've got another small orchid top that I've just taken from another orchid. But that's okay, because the one that the fastuosa is going to come out of is going to be cleaned up and then that orchid still gets its orchid top. For the sake of not being out in the sun with my orchid for too long, we're going to just use what we've got all nice and clean. So what I'm planning to do here is just same thing. This is recycled ceramics. I have no intention of reusing what I've got there in that pot. That's gonna be a nightmare to clean, but clean it I will. So I'm just filling the base with some ceramics because the wicking comes from the tray on up. And then we're going to see how our basket is going to fit in. I've done this before, as you saw with the Van der Glossum, worked perfectly. I wasn't fussed, but it gave the orchid stability at the same time. It's kind of what I want to replicate here and now with my pastuosa because I think she'll just easily pull out because there are no live roots in that pot. Let me get you in shot. Do not forget that I'm alone here. I'm not alone here. I'm with you. You're with me. Thank you. Come on out. So we did have some roots go into the pot, but Oh, and we have some viable ones. That's great. But we have more non-viable ones. Let's put it that way. Let's not get our head of ourselves here. So there we go. Because she was in active growth, I have fertilizer in the dish of 100 parts per million. There we go. We have some viable roots. And it is beautifully glaring into my screen. I hope that my memory bank shows a focus here. And we have some non-viable roots, which can stay. Because sometimes Arangus roots can be black. I mean, this is clearly dead right here. That's obvious. But some of the blackening on Arangus roots, they can mislead you. And you might think, yeah, that root's not viable. And then you're like, uh, oops, when you cut into it, we don't want that. Every little helps here. So the idea being using the basket as my support to keep the orchid in place, watching the roots in the background and all that important stuff where I'm putting them. And then starts the fiddly job of putting ceramics around it. 
So let's get a reposition here. And I could let go. Woohoo! Always keeping an eye on the height. If she's too high, I'm going to start again. I don't want to keep doing this year in, year out. Mindful of what I'm putting around the stem. Just because we're heading into warmer temperatures, the next winter is coming. So all of that is now what's going through my head as I put her into position. I hope I didn't annoy this orchid too much. I may not get that one root to continue growing. They are fussy like that. Hopefully we can get the other one to grow. Now all that remains is just to fill up the tray. I'm gonna start with the top. I know that this looks risky. I'm gonna bank on the fact it is a sunny day. The terrace door is open and it's breezy. I want that humidity up by those roots. So there's a hundred parts of a million of calcium and magnesium in that water. And fingers crossed, <laughs> I get both roots to continue growing. They absolutely hate this. But anyway, needs must. She would have hated it more if I didn't correct her. And I think the little basket trick works really, really well. And I hope that this inspires you. If you've got an obnoxious orchid that doesn't want to stay upright, but needs must because roots are growing aerial and they would otherwise fail. You're not entirely sure how to pull that off without too much staking. Use a little net basket works like a treat. And if you've made it this far, thank you so very, very much. Your company was much appreciated. Thank you to everybody that gave me the orchids that I featured today. Appreciate that you made that happen for me and my collection. And now I get to wish you a fabulous day on that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye.